Nick Harcourt, your host, it's Morning Becomes Eclectic. Welcome back to our studios this morning, the Assembled Forces of Zero Seven. Good morning, guys. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks so much for coming down overnight and sleeping not very much on a bus and getting up early and coming in and doing the session for us. We do appreciate it. It's uh, Sam Hardacre and Henry Benz. They're the guys behind Zero Seven. Maybe I could get you to introduce the uh, other musicians in the studio with you this morning. Yeah, I can uh, work my way around. I've got Crispin in the back over there on drums. Uh, Rob's over here playing bass. Daddy's playing guitar. Sophie's here, just relaxing. <laughs> Moses is here. Tina's here. C is here. Henry's over there. And Jim's in the back on the piano. Welcome, everybody. I think the best thing we can do is throw it over to you for a set. We'll come back and we'll yeah. catch up with a little information, what's been going on. I know you're just about to wrap up this uh, US tour, but right now, live set of music in studio at 07 on Morning Becomes Eclectic. <laughs>
It's Morning Becomes Eclectic at 89.9 KCIW and a set of music in the studios this morning as we wrap up our week. It's a great way to wrap it up. Zero Seven are here and three songs from the new album, which has been in stores a little while now. Uh, the CD is called When It Falls. We've got another set coming up, but maybe we can just catch up with the guys a little bit. It's been a few years since we saw you, probably two and a half years, something yeah. like that, I think. Yeah. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have been busy, right? Four songs a year, yeah. <laughs> I think it's uh, is, is it fair to say that the new album is uh, a little informed a little influenced uh, by the time you spent on the road when you were in the States last time around because you did uh, a lot of touring here didn't you yeah I think undoubtedly it's um, it had a bearing on sort of how we approached making the record and, and just hanging out with all these guys and and experiencing you know touring and what it's like to kind of have a band around because it was pretty you know before it was pretty lonely it was just me and the Don Binzi in the, in the <laughs> studio, sitting around, you know. And, um, yeah, it gets, yeah, it does get a little lonesome. So um, it was nice to have the company of, you know, all these people. But you guys put the band together, obviously, and, and, and headed off on, on the road and did European dates, did uh, dates uh, in America. But tell us what it was like, um, you know, touring across America. I mean, you would be going into towns, I'm guessing, uh, that you'd never been to before. And I, I believe that you spend a little bit of time looking through uh, record record uh, stores and uh, equipment stores and stuff like that. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess we said that once, and now it's become <laughs> sort of like character-defining <clears throat> moments. Um, I mean, yeah, that's what we do. Usually, you're kind of stumbling off the bus with a hangover and just wandering about, and it, you know, you end up in uh, in record stores or whatever. And, no, I mean, you end up. In we end up. Stores. So you end up in thrift <laughs> stores. We end up in record stores. <laughs> whatever takes your fancy. Did you Did you try any of the new songs out when you were on tour last time? We did. It was pretty disastrous, generally, <laughs> kind of in, ter- in, in terms of sort of road testing those songs. I mean, it's not. It was never kind of pointless, but it, though it was quite painful a couple of times. I mean, I just think we we, it, we hadn't kind of really worked out what we wanted to do with them. So maybe we had to go and, and suffer those moments just to realise that they were all wrong and, <laughs> or, and and needed to go back to the drawing board. Yeah, like Somersault needed a chorus. <laughs> yeah, ha 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 ha. Ha ha, very funny. <laughs> so, so where'd you do the record? Where'd you actually record? Um, we've got, we've just got a little studio in London, in, in West London, Willesden. I have to give a shout out to Willesden. And the jerk chicken. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we just, you know, we just uh, sit and, and kind of write and produce as we go in, in the studio and bring all the people who are involved kind of in on a, can't generally quite sort of separately and, and just just work on you know building the tracks up. One of the uh, one of the great things about uh, uh, zero seven is is the vocalists obviously. Yes, it's us. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's not ignore the band. Come on. First and foremost is about the band. I I can hear Sia in there somewhere. I think I can't I can't I can't see Sia, but I can hear her. Um, uh, it's for the best. And you you've added a, another vocalist to the lineup this time around as well, Tina Deco. Yeah. Um, do, do the vocalists contribute contribute the lyrics? Uh, yeah, generally it's their stuff. I mean, we, you know, it can it, the collaboration can work in a number of ways, and it's not and there's no real sort of set formula to it. So um, it just depends, you know, how how each track um, kind of unfolds. And sometimes it's really simple, and they just bring you know they'll bring a song or they'll bring lyrics, and we have ideas for chords and melodies or whatever. And other times it's like, um, yeah, it's like pulling teeth out. <laughs> So 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 when you guys are sitting there and you're, you're writing the bare bones of of these these songs, do you have an idea of, of which vocalist you you want to use on this? Not really. I, th- I mean, we just knock up some music and and kind of and see who who likes what. I mean, everyone's pretty decisive. Are coming to say, yeah, I can vibe on that, or no, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I think probably everyone's dissed somebody else's track once i mean like we've we've offered things up and they've been rejected flatly and then someone else will will respond to it and you know but i mean that's that's kind of the way it goes you know i think we you have to we sort of go through that process to establish who um you know who reacts to what and and then we can kind of proceed now you you jokingly talked about yeah we did like four songs a year kind of thing but i mean did you do this (laughs) over? (laughs) it's not a joke (laughs) I mean, did you did you guys really stretch this out over that over that period of time? I mean, you're doing other things as well, obviously. Um, no, no, no. You're lying on a that. beach. <laughs> no, I mean, of course, of course, I am. You have, I have no joking, idea. Yes. <laughs> no, we were we were here. You know, we were here a lot. Um, and and like you say, the, the kind of touring of the last record was quite drawn out. And um, so when we, you know, by the time we got back and realised that the few new songs that we did have weren't quite ready, um, we spent you know probably nine months i think right you know kind of starting again writing and and recording and sort of you know two steps forward one step backwards what what do, thing. what do you feel is the is the difference between these two records can you put your finger on it um i don't know i think this record just became a lot more kind of personal it became much more about the people that are involved rather than some kind of big kind of grand idea that we had of a, a concept for it so it much just, much more of a band album than a yeah, studio project yeah i think project. so and, and about the singers and and just kind of it's a little more personal in that way i think you know i i, I feel like that it was the first you know the first record wasn't made as an album you know we didn't go in and make it in one go it was it was sort of drawn from lots of little little kind of projects and, and ideas that we had with different people this one we we kind of sat sat around with with the singers and, and wrote just wrote a bunch of songs and that was that was kind of it there wasn't really a concept for anything beyond that well i know you're just about wrapping up this this uh this tour i caught you in kentucky a couple of weeks ago which was an interesting gig to say <laughs> to say the least i heard sia yeah. saying afterwards it was like playing in a microwave because <laughs> <laughs> you had no lights you were just playing in yellow lights it was, it was kind yeah. of kind of a weird it thing was weird. So weird. yeah that was, that was the first the first show of the i tour. know i know how's the rest of it been 
it's, it's been just, you know, uphill from there, really. It's just got better and better. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't really start off worse, but um, it's, well, it's been really good. You know, it's been, it's, for me, it's, it's a pleasure to be with, with these people and have them, you know, playing up, playing the songs that we've all written together. And I, I feel really honoured. Just standing in the other room, listening to them all playing, you know, I feel really um, proud. You do pay. You do pay him as well, though, right? <laughs> Minimal. It's like, it's, I think standard. it's, it's important. The live shows have been really important because the singers have excelled and and sung really well, and it, it kind of breaks through that cold facade of electronica that electronica tends to have. Do you not think? I do think absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why it's so important that bands like yourself put bands together with real singers and with musicians and go out and do it properly. So, uh, I'm happy that you're wrapping up the the tour in Southern California and dropping by our station this yeah, morning. So are we. Hmm. There is a show tonight at the John Anson Ford Amphitheater. Another one on Sunday, and you're in San Diego at Fourth and B tomorrow. We're going to give away some tickets when we come back at the end of the show to the performance tonight. But I'm going to throw it back to you guys. We've got about 15 minutes left and three songs. I think we might be able to squeeze this all in. So yeah, I hope so. It's zero seven and. And uh, they're live on one and becomes eclectic. It's 89.9 KCRW.
Wrapping up our program this week with Zero Seven on Morning Becomes Eclectic. I want to thank you guys for coming in. We really do appreciate it. It's great to see you again. Yeah, thank thank you. thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, you're very welcome. And uh, I know Sophie's a, l- a little under the weather dealing with some allergies, I'm told. So. <laughs> no, 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 I'm fine. You're all right? I'm <laughs> yeah, everyone's dealing with not kind of not much sleep. And yeah, I got and it. All of that kind of thing. I hear you. I so really I just, they're, all, they're all really heavy and they need to know that. Right. <laughs> well done, guys. <laughs> yeah, well done, everybody. Thanks again. Uh, we're going to give away some tickets to this show. That is, to us, that is so that tonight. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you need some tickets here? We need tickets <laughs> badly. We need tickets. I think this, the show's sold out. sold out. Yeah. We can't even get our friends in. <laughs> we'll have to work on that for you. <laughs> uh, I also want to let people know that Tina has a show at the Hotel Cafe on Wednesday. Woo. And um, Sia is going to be back doing her music on our program on Wednesday as well. So uh, we look forward to those shows uh, coming up next week as well. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Okay.